In this video, you'll learn how to use Substance 3D Sampler to turn a photograph or single scan of a real-life material into a digital 3D material. That material can then be used in other 3D applications like Substance 3D Stager, Painter, or more. You can use your own scan or photograph, but if you want to follow along, the exact image file is provided for download. Let's start by creating a new project in Sampler. You get one empty material in your project list. Materials are usually built in Sampler by importing images and layering filters on top of them. So let's bring up our Explorer and drag the fabric image into Sampler. Once we drop it, the material creation template window shows up. Sampler's suggestion to use the image to material template is correct. Please note that for the moment, the AI powered method that we are using in this video is not available on Apple OS X or devices with AMD graphics hardware. The alternative B2M method should work fine, though a few options might look different. After some calculations, we then get three layers in our stack. The image to material layer has turned our single image into a multi channel 3D material, but we need to tweak it some more. Click the top filter and look at the properties. If you open the basic parameter rollout, you can tweak some settings. The actual height looks inverted. Those red areas should go inwards instead of outwards. Click the Height Invert checkbox to fix that. Next, we want to tweak the geometry details a bit. Moving the sliders for micro, medium, and large details changes the overall look. There's no right or wrong here, just tweak until you think it looks good. Image to Material has taken out a lot of the color from our photo in an attempt to remove unwanted shadows and lighting. If you find the Delighting Intensity slider, we can reduce that effect. Setting it to zero works in this case. Other images might look better with delighting, so remember to just tweak things. We're also getting too much reflection. Under Roughness, change the base value until things improve. You might want to change the variation slider to get some more detail into the reflection. Our material is still not usable. We've got a large unwanted area around our material sample. Let's crop that out using the crop tool found at the top left. Crop adds a cropping layer and opens the 2D view. We can adjust the cropping handles, but it's a bit hard to do so when things move all the time. Click the drop down to the top right of the 2D view and choose Layer Inputs. This sets your 2D view to show the results of the previous layer, letting you align your crop easily. Make sure to crop until we have only the material sample in view. If we look closely, there's also some perspective distortion. To fix that, let's add the perspective transform right below where we found the crop. For this one, it's easier to set the 2D view back to material outputs. Then just adjust the handles until things look straight. Our material still isn't tiling properly. We need another filter for this, but we'll add it differently. Above the layer stack, there's a button to access all filters. If we click it, we can search for keywords. Type tiling and add the tiling filter. This filter tries to do smart, seamless blending across edges by creating a sort of transition zone. That means it crops a little bit as well. The tiling filter does depend on proper cropping and perspective correction beforehand. You can go back and adjust previous filters if needed. Everything updates on the fly. With a repeating pattern like this, you'll have to tweak and be quite precise where you place the tiling handles. Once it starts to look like the red shapes align nicely, you can make them blend together a bit better by opening the edge section of the properties and playing with the threshold setting. Threshold moves that transition line. Once that looks good, the blur and smoothness slider let your border fade together in a smooth way. With a bit of work, you can completely hide the transition. If we zoom out a bit, our material is still showing some repetition. If you open the viewer settings in the bottom left and find the texture scale slider under tiling, you can increase the repetition. Let's try four for both U and V. We'll need to insert one more filter here. Open the filter menu and search for equal. Add the equalize filter. This filter attempts to remove local differences within a specific radius. It's added at the top of our stack, but it works best right after the image to material filter. So drag the equalize down in the stack, just between crop and image to material. 
then make sure you have a good view of the repeated material and tweak the radius slider of the equalizer until things look right. Things quickly turn very gray, so the keep local differences setting helps keep our colors in there. Then a radius value of around six seems to work well and removes almost all repeated variation. Once your scan is processed into a material, there are a few ways to change it a bit further. Let's say I want to make the entire material blue. If you click the Add Filter button again and type Color, you'll see a few filters. The easiest one to use in this case is the Color Variation filter, so let's add that. Our material turns gray, but if we look at the properties, you see you can choose two separate colors to apply to the material. We can choose two tints this way, so let's pick some blue tints. After you've found some good colors, the Luminosity Variation slider can help bring back some detail. In this case, a high value looks better. Our material looks about done now. Let's rename it first. Right-click the material, choose Rename, and hit Enter once you've typed in a new name. Now let's use it in another application. The Share button in the top right lets you do just this. Click it, and you have two options. For Substance 3D Painter, you can send your material over with a single click. You can then find it in Painter's Asset Panel and use it in your projects. If you want to use it in another application, click the Export As button. This export dialog lets you set up things like path, file type, what application to target, and even what resolution. We'll choose the SBSAR file type, as this is easiest to use in Substance 3D Stager. You can use bitmap file types as well, like PNG. And with these, the presets become available, so they can be easily loaded in your 3D app of choice. We'll click Export once things are set up. Then, to use your material in Stager, select a mesh or part of a mesh in Stager, go to File, Import, Place Material on Selection. Find your exported SBSAR file and open it. Your material is applied to your selection and you can tweak things like uh, the repeat. You can follow this roller skate tutorial for Stager in another video. Congratulations, you've just gone from a photograph to a 3D material in a matter of minutes.